There you go, guys. This is kind of like the tapas. As I told you, every time you drink a beer, it's uh, usual to get a uh, free tapas or things like that just to eat and uh, not get drunk too easily. Very good. Very damn good. Oh my god. Good morning, my friends, or as I would like to say in Spain, buenos dias, amigos. Here we are in the beautiful, majestic, and wonderful city of Madrid, okay? My home capital, or my, my home city, in a few words. And today, guys, we are in Plaza Mayor. That is one of the most famous plazas here in Madrid, as you can see. It's beautiful everywhere, beautiful statues, beautiful history. Everything is so beautiful. I believe most of the people that has stepped on this country has been to the Plaza Mayor and has tried one of the delicious places that we have around here, okay? We have a lot, a lot of restaurants that they are selling typical Spanish food. Instead, a lot of tapas. That's why we are in this adventure today, guys. We are gonna try a lot, a lot of tapas, Spanish tapas. That for the people who don't know it, the tapas are kind of like a snack it's not kind of like a complete meal it's just something that you would eat in the afternoon or that you would eat for free with your beer when you're in a bar and yeah my friends this plaza has a lot a lot of history it was made in the 18th century it was called before plaza de la raval and in this place you can see that there's a big big statue in the middle before it was not like that before it was a market where all the people from plaza del sol or all the streets around here came here just to try food just to buy just to sell just to do a lot of things how works a market and this place right now is national patronized of spain of course it's a very very touristic place as i tell you and of course this is the lifestyle that a spaniard uh, a true spaniard should have just drinking a beer with your tapa un tercio por la mañana <laughs> with all the sun with all the ambient in here it's just magical guys it's just the essence of madrid so yeah guys uh, join me in this adventure today that we're gonna try some spanish tapas and it's gonna be pretty exciting so stay tuned and let's gonna see this delicious delicious adventure let's go So there you go guys, here we are in our next destination, the Mercado of San Miguel. One of the most famous places to eat Spanish tapas, the authentic and the most delicious ones. This place is pretty amazing guys because as you can see there's like an iron structure around all the place that it's prevent from the 20th century, that's the crazy thing right? This place has more than 200 years and it's still one of the most popular places to visit in Madrid. That's why I wanted to come here just to show you how it's inside and how all these things works and how the tapas of course so let's go inside and let's see how the tapas goes can you give me like one of pulpo la gallega one octopus, okay? Yeah, and boquerones. Boquerones, perfecto. Yeah, and one banderilla. Una banderilla, muy bien. Yeah. ¿Alguna más? Yeah, that's es it. Todo. Yeah. Salmone, Thank okay? You. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. All right, there you go, guys. So the first tapas that we are going to try are these three, all right? Here we have some boquerones con pimientos, some pulpo a la gallega, and of course one banderilla that it has, I don't really know what it has, I think it's anchovies or some kind of fish with some olives and, and peppers. I'm not gonna lie to you. The one that I, is more exciting for me is the pulpo a la gallega, it's the one that I like the most. As you can see, it's just octopus, all right? It's cut very thinly with a slice of potato and with some pimenton. So let's gonna try it out, guys. And let's see, pulpo a la gallega, cheers. How is it? That's pretty damn good. I mean, every tapa is two euros, all right? A little bit expensive, in my opinion, because in three bites, you finish the whole tapa, <laughs> okay? I'm not gonna lie to you, it's pretty small. It's a little bit overpriced, okay? Because a few years ago, it was not that high, the, the price. I believe it was the half of it. It was one euro, right? One euro, one euro and something, and now it's just double. For me, the, the price is a little bit over uh, what it should be, but instead it's so, so delicious, guys. Let's gonna go ahead and try the boquerones con pimientos. There you go. It's not a very mysterious thing. It's just a piece of fish on top with some peppers behind and the crunchy crunchy bread 
that I really love. So let's gonna give a bite and let's see. Mm. Wow, that's pretty damn good. No. <laughs> indeed, Malansa, indeed. Indeed, Malansa. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Honestly, when I was living here a few years ago, I was not a big fan of the boqueron and this type of tapas like that. But I have to say that the mixture of the peppers and the fish is just perfect. Just I like it so much. And the crunch of the toast is amazing, guys. I like more the boquerones than the pulpo la gallega. Usually, it's reversed, right? It's the opposite, but... Today I think the boquerones won the match. And the last but not less important, we have the banderilla that it consists only in some anchovies, some olives and some peppers that I put in a stick. Uh, yeah, just like that, you're gonna take bite by bite and finish all this delicious pincho. Pincho, I didn't remember the, the word. So yeah, let's gonna try it out. Some pepper. Not bad, but I think we have to mix all together to get all the flavors, so let's go ahead. Hmm. Not bad. More or less, more or less. I mean, I think the best part are the olives, all right? Because the olives, they're native, they are taken from the, the main country of Spain. So they are pretty, pretty damn good. I think it's, it's the best expert part. In olives. Yeah, of course, the, the Spaniards are experts in olives. But yeah, anyways, it's good, the banderilla. Um, not as delicious as I expected, but not bad. Our next tapa family is the amazing and pretty tasty Butifarra Catalana, all right? That is kind of one of the most famous sausages in Spain, all right? It's not the most famous because that's the chorizo, but instead this is a very tasty option. This is not that typical in Madrid, all right, because it's the capital, but this is very, very typical in Catalonia, all right? That is the province where Barcelona is. I bet most of you know about Barcelona. It's one of the most famous cities in Spain. So this is one of the most famous dishes and sausages around there. Let's gonna give it a go and let's see if its popularity is dessert or not. Mm. All right, there you go. Not bad actually. It's pretty fatty and it's hard to just swallow it, but it's pretty tasty. I can say that I like so much the flavor you can see in there all of uh, what has inside uh yeah guys i think this deserves a bite with the bread instead so let's gonna give it mm. oh my god the sausage alone is just amazing but with the bread it's much easier to swallow it it's much tastier and the texture that the bread gives to the bite is just amazing i mean the bread is fluffy it's warm and uh, with the with the sausage it's kind of like a hot dog but better for me basically i would put like a sauce or something like a chimichurri or maybe a barbecue sauce i don't know but it's kind of so simple i would add some sauce on it to make it you know just tastier and better but anyways guys let's move on and let's see the next tapa let's go This is fussy. It's easy, 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 it's there you go. This is for Isai. That's Isai, for you. this is for you. How you feel? Cheers, Philippines. Tagay. <laughs> Tagay, Philippines. Kampai, Tagay, everything. <laughs> there you go. Oh my God. It's, a, it's, a, it's a rat there. It's a view with lemon. So they're gonna this is the difference of Philippines. But we don't put... Yeah, we don't put ice, ice in the in beer. The, the beer has to be pretty, pretty cold. And the cup as well, okay? The cup has to be freezing cold. It's coming free for this. Yeah, it's there you go. We have the big tube. We can uh, take Amstel, Amster Radler, or Aguila. We can take different yeah, variety of, of beers. But the question is... That is pretty cold. Oh, this is not cold, but it's coming cold inside. Oh. Muy amable, gracias. 
All right, there you go. I miss this so much, all right? Chin chin. And how do you say in the Philippines? Ah, muchas gracias, hostia. There you go, some tapas as well. Muchas gracias. There you go guys, this is kind of like the tapas, as I told you, every time you drink a beer, it's uh, usual to get uh, free tapas or things like that, just to eat, uh, not get drunk too easily. So yeah, we have some paella. This hospitality bro. Yeah, uh, this is the, ma the main hospitality of the Spaniards. The most typical plate in Spain, we have the paella right here, the most traditional one. Let's try it. I miss the uh, paella. We miss paella guys. It's a uh, rice in a big pot, in a big uh, pan with some seafood. We have calamares, oysters, we have a lot of veggies. And in some parts of Spain, like in Valencia, they put a rabbit instead. That's called the paella valenciana with rabbit. But this is not the case, so I'm gonna try it out. I missed it. I missed it so much. My favorite part of the paella every time I eat it is just to take the almejas and eat it like that. Tulia. Mm. Tulia? The tulia. Very good. Very good. Oh my god. Masara? Más mazarap imposible. And that, my friends, is how a Spaniard will prepare his calamares. Of course, it's kind of different from the Philippines. In the Philippines, it's prepared with suca, with vinegar, as we well know. But the Spaniard version, I think it's also so nice. So yeah, basically, that's the one of the most traditional Spanish plates. You could find some calamares with limón. There you go guys, we call it also anillas de pota, these little rings of the calamar that we take and you can see the nice and a little bit crispy outside that it has in top of with some lemon, so let's gonna try it out. Mm. Pretty nice, soft, I mean the outside could be a little bit crispier, but it's, just, it's a pretty good flavor, I like the taste of the lemon of course. Since I was a kid, I was putting lemon in the calamares and completely delicious, it's outstanding. But I think the, the outside could be a little bit crispier, the, only that. And of course, my friends, the main dish, the star dish, the, 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 the thing that everybody when come to Spain wants to try and the thing that I see in BGC for 50 fucking euros. I'm talking about the jamón ibérico. There you go, guys. We have here a whole plate of jamón ibérico. Man, I am not lying to you. The last time we went to the cerveceria there in BGC, two, 2,600, one plate of this. It's just crazy, guys. <laughs> of course, this is one of the most delicious this, uh, plates in Spain. This is a delicacy. And of course, I miss this so much. It's a leg of a pork that is put salted in a room just for it, get it dry for a few months because it's covered with salt all right and they let it dry for a few months and this is the main result all right this is the kind of the raw leg of the pig but it's eatable so oh man the the, the, the smell is incredible it's gonna give a bite <laughs> You are Muslim? <laughs> <laughs> nah, come. Guys, absolutely outstanding. Like, for the people who never tried the jamón in their lives. I mean, bro, come to Spain, try the jamón, you're not gonna regret it. You're gonna... ¿Cómo se dice? It's a bit smelly, but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's a smelly? I think the, the smell is just amazing. I don't know. You don't have any words to describe it. We're just gonna nod no the head. No puede. No puede. No puede. No puede. No puede. No puede. This is the treasure of the life, guys. Como? Wala ako masabe. Wala ako masabe. Oh, yeah. Speechless. Oh my God! Look at that. That's very brown, little. Very malambot. It's probably one of the best sandwiches you could try in Spain. Here we have it, jamón with queso curado. There you go, guys. There you go, some queso curado on top with jamón. The crunchy and delicious bread. 
quite a good tapa actually. Of course, very cold beer has to be accompanied with all these tapas. And I don't have nothing more to say, guys. Just gonna sit and enjoy all this food. Well, everybody, the damage is 36.5 euros. I mean, all the prices that I see here are pretty fair, all right? The calamares were 13 euros. I believe it's kind of like uh, 700 pesos. I, I think less than that, as well as the jamón, all right? The plate of jamón in BGC, you could find it, as I tell you, like 50 euros. Instead here is uh, 13, 13 euros. And of course, we took the, the sandwich that are three euros and the beers. Yeah, the beers, uh, it's two euros, two euros each one are pretty big pretty cold and i think it's pretty good price right like 100 pesos 120 pesos for a beer in bgc we pay yeah. 300 pesos in bgc oh my god when we want to do a round of beers it's more than 1000 and stuff like that it's so so mahal but anyways i think uh, all of this food and the beers fair price and yeah the museo del jamón has very good notes for me. I would like to say that I like the naturality that has the, the waiters here in, in Spain, all right? The people who serve the beers and stuff, they are pretty funny, very talkative. They're always talking with you and they're putting the, the beers directly from the reef. Uh, just like that, like, I mean, joking, yeah, joking. Yeah, it's making you feel like yeah, home. It's making you feel like home, actually. It's, it's pretty nice, very nice people here in Spain, especially the people who work in this type of places. I can't complain about anything. I miss this so much. Uh, it feels like home, honestly. So well, everybody, I hope you like this adventure in Madrid. I loved to try the tapas that all my life I've been enjoying and I hope you enjoy it too. And you know, if you like more videos in Madrid, just give a like, drop a comment and subscribe, of course, for more content in Spain. See you in the next, everybody, and hasta luego.